throughout my channel's history, I do like a review of a couple of Titanic books, in my opinion. There's Stormlight, there's King Killer, there's Gentleman Bastards. There's stuff like that where I really just go in and I review really monstrous, giant, famous books. And I don't think that I've reviewed a book as famous as this one, which is Game of Thrones. So this book is something that I've put off for a long time. I've really, really been expecting to pick it up and enjoy it a lot, just because of the way people talk about it. Uh, one of the main things that I hear about this series is that it's a very grimdark and a really gritty and a really beautiful series in that way. And reading through, I have to say I agree. Right away, I'm going to start this video off by saying this is going to be one of my favorite series of all time. I can already see it. It's such a just a fantastic way of expressing these dark, gritty ideas. It's such an it's such a plot that is so deceivingly pathetic and making it into something that's so beautiful and rich and stylistic and it's just for that reason that I'm going to say right from the start I love this book. It's such a fantastic book and I'm going to talk about it later on. I am going to be leaving a break between this and the next books. I am actually I read this book like way 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 a long time ago and this book is going to this review is actually going to come out way way later so you're going to have to bear with me as I do this. But at the same time definitely expect these reviews to be coming out. This is such a great series. I, I love this series so much and it seems so fantastic. A lot of people have been telling me to read it especially Chief Hand Grenade. Shout out to my man. Thanks for reaching out and telling me to recommending me this series. I really have enjoyed it. Thanks for your support. There will be a spoiler review by the end, so if you don't want to watch that, I'll tell you by that point. Now, since I read this book so long ago, there is this one term that I really wanted to use. It's such an interesting term that I've never really used before, but I found that like after a long time just thinking about how I was gonna review this series, I feel like there's no better way to review it than using this term, which is forward momentum. This book has a forward momentum like nothing else. I've really paid attention to the way the chapters are set up and with the way that the plot lines have really converged. And the main thing that I have to say about this series is that each chapter has two story beats at least. And these two story beats kind of have the one obvious story beat that's gonna continue from the last chapter. And then following that, a brand new story beat that is so uh, unbelievably exciting, brand new, that you didn't expect it to happen, but it doesn't completely finish that storyline. And because of that, it really draws you to read the next chapter, to see, to feel that momentum of, I want to go on, I want to see what happens next. Because it's always so fresh, so new, as if this new plot is always being like brought up out of nowhere, and it's just fascinating that way. Another incredibly interesting thing about this is the characters. Now, usually you would find a character to be likable in some way, and in this, I, I wouldn't completely disagree with that notion, but it seems like these characters are not made to be likable. What they're made to be is they're made to be very distinct. You can really see that Martin really put a lot of effort into making each of these characters so distinct and interesting on their own. These characters aren't really archetypal. They're just interesting in general because these characters have been sculpted by the way that their pasts have been created and the way their futures seem to go on. I can't say that any of these characters are similar to any character that I've ever read about. And so because of that, we have these interesting, interesting characters that are so complex and diverse. And there's so many of them that it just becomes like a full, full encompassing story. And that's just another incredible part of it that I loved is that there's so many characters, there's so much going on. There's always something going on somewhere. And the news spreads and we see that these kings have been falling and these people have been rioting. We see this war has been waged and these people are in like are in poverty. And there's always something going on based on everything else around it. And this is such a beautiful, interconnected world. And that's just one of the main draws that I see to it, right? The characters are fantastic and original in their own way. And then each of the places are so rich and diverse and so interconnected that if I have to call something fantasy, it would be this. I know that most people say that this is fantasy, but that really confuses me because compared to like Harry Potter, right? People argue Harry Potter is not epic fantasy and Game of Thrones is, which is so weird because if anything's epic fantasy, it's Harry Potter. He stopped the Dark Lord while Game of Thrones is just like a fight between uh, kings, right? So I don't I don't get why people call Harry Potter not an epic fantasy in this epic fantasy And so the reason I'm saying this is because I really want to show you that it's such a clearly not epic fantasy series That has just proven through its sheer narrative and story that it cannot be anything but epic fantasy Even though the element in itself you, you would think that this shouldn't be epic fantasy It just is and that's that's just mind-blowing Right from the start, I picked up some of my favorite characters. I really thought that Ned Stark would be one of my favorite characters. I also really enjoyed Bran. Uh, I started to enjoy Caitlyn in one part, but then I stopped. Uh, I never really enjoyed Rob's story or uh, Jon Snow's. So these some there's some people that I like really have uh, a connection with. And then Daenerys, dude, I love Daenerys. Daenerys is so good. And then Tyrion, dude, Tyrion is so much fun as well. So you can already see that I just from reading this one book, I'm already a fan of such interesting characters. And I'm not a fan of all of them, which is just such a weird thought to me because if I see online discussions, people are big fans of other characters. And to me, that's just really interesting because what it shows is that this isn't just 
a, a certain group of characters that are likable and a certain group of characters that are not likable. What it is, is such a, a wide array of characters and all of them are so well done that as a human being, you can pick only a certain amount that you relate to and you really enjoy while the other group is not unlikable. It's just not likable to you. So what I'm trying to say is these characters are so diverse that I have certain favorites while other people have their own favorites. This means that all of the characters are very well done and they're very well done in a human way. Although my personal personality does not really enjoy certain characters, that does not at all say that these characters are not well loved by the community. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of great stuff and I really want to get onto the spoiler section, but I, before I do that, I do want to talk about some of the negatives and there aren't many, but there are a couple that I want to mention. In the middle of this book, I really found that stuff was starting to slow down. Not exactly the middle, but at about the two thirds mark to about the ending. The ending wasn't that great. There's something big going on, obviously, because it is an epic fantasy book, but as this stuff went on, I really felt like a lot of these characters started to grow out of steam. Specifically Rob, I really didn't, I started to really feel like I didn't want to be with Rob that much. And that kind of annoyed me because Rob has such an interesting storyline. But the way that this storyline was approached by kind of just not really doing anything for a long period of time while trying to build it up, it, it didn't work for me. And so Rob is one of those characters that I didn't enjoy. Another thing that I didn't really enjoy was the part about some savages, I believe, or something. There are a certain group of people that are very savage, and we kind of get them associated with a certain character in a certain group, and they kind of continue on the main journey with them. And it's kind of interesting, right? From a theoretical perspective, that would be a really interesting way to do it. But the way that it was actually done makes it feel like it was interesting right at first, right? When they were kind of attacked. But then as it went on, they were supposed to be integrated into the story in a, in a great way but i really felt like it wasn't integrated very well i feel like there was a, a lot of uh, places where it, they felt very separate and they felt like very out of place and although that might have been you know perhaps a slight intention i feel like it really suffered because the way that they were out of place made it feel like when they weren't on screen it was like oh they're, they're gone finally because they've been kind of pulling my attention kind of annoying me for the entire thing and then they come back and they act as if they've been doing a lot of stuff in the meantime and it just doesn't feel like it fits together for me so those are my main two criticisms i really had to search for that i'm going to be talking about very very more uh, specific criticisms in the spoiler section so if that's all you want uh, for the non-spoiler section thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button down below and let me know what you thought of the non-spoiler section and or anything or anything down in the comments down below i would really enjoy to hear your responses and if you do enjoy this review please hit the subscribe button and if you want to see the future reviews of all the Game of Thrones books and all the other stuff going on, uh, check my channel if you like fantasy, subscribe. And uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, but not the spoiler section, boys. Let's let's talk about that. For a series as big as this, it's very hard to avoid spoilers on the internet. Successfully, somehow, I was able to avoid some of the spoilers, specifically around Bran. I had heard from the internet that apparently Bran dies from the first few chapters, and that was such a shock to me. And as soon as I got to that chapter, it was like, okay, finally this happens. And it was a very exciting scene nonetheless, and I really enjoyed it. But the thing that I want to say is that he comes back to life. And that's so interesting to me because I never expected that to happen. I thought he was dead. And you can really see that as soon as like this guy kind of dies, right? He, he sort of dies, Rand kind of dies, come back to life later on in the story. And he continues. And it's such an interesting way of pulling that together. It's like a revival story, but it's something that's so believable. And it wasn't at all like out of place. It felt very logical to me. It was at this point that I sort of started to hate people like Caitlyn and uh, Caitlyn like drove me nuts at this point because she was like so weird and she was so uh, attached and so like annoying to the audience right now because of how she was attached to that one char character. She kind of neglected all the other characters and it was so just awful to read. But as I went through, Caitlyn, when she starts doing stuff like when she ventures out by herself to go to, I don't know, go to the south, right? That was so interesting and that was so brave to me and I really felt like that really encapsulated the entire story of these characters who do bad things sometimes and do good things the other time and just the complexity of human nature. It was such an interesting thing for me to really hate Caitlyn Stark, love her, and then hate her again when, later on when she was with Rob, because I really found her insufferable then. Dude, I loved Ned Stark. What happened to Ned Stark, man? No! I sort of expected it, not gonna lie. I kind of got spoiled by that. Uh, but, dude, it still hurt. It still hurt. Oh my god, Ned Stark was such a fascinating character. He was kind of the archetypal guy who was like, gonna solve everything. And then when he died, it was just so massive to me, because it was like, you can't just kill off my favorite character, right? Because he's the guy that really stands up. He's, he's like the head of the family. He's really the one fighting for everybody else. And then he's killed. And that's so interesting to me because in no other story could you do that. You couldn't do that in any other story. But by doing this, George really pulls his punches. Martin just beats him up. And, and it's just so interesting to see that he's, uh, his ability to do something like this. And it just sets a whole new precedent for fantasy as a whole. Like Robert Jordan was right, man. 
this is great. This is a fascinating story and I'm so excited to see where it goes. I did have some problems with some other characters like Peter Baelish. He was confusing. I, I didn't know what this guy was about. We know that he's kind of on nobody's side and that's cool. But at the same time, it's like, how is he on nobody's side? Right? We're kind of told this many times. But to me, it feels a lot like it's just kind of saying stuff. And I'm sure this is going to be established later on because this is a very complex character, clearly. I think it was because of bad writing. I feel like he was neglected a little bit. His character did not shine through enough in each. Like, Martin had an idea of what he should be. And he kind of told it to the characters by through uh, dialogue and stuff of the characters. But Baelish himself, we didn't really see him do much. There are certain points where we do see this happen. But I don't think that this is done enough to show the real trickery that is behind Peter Baelish. And I, I really found like that was kind of a fault of the story. One thing that I didn't expect was Robert dying. Uh, that was huge. I, that's massive. It's one of those things that you would think is one of those main spoilers that you wouldn't expect. But dude, he just came and he died. And that was like the big mind blow for me. It's like, really? You killed him off already? Dude, that was so interesting. And it's at this point that I realized, oh, that's what a Game of Thrones is about. It's about like this guy, he came and he took the throne from another, another guy. And these guys, like the Daenerys people, right? They're still trying to get their throne back. Plus this guy who was in, originally in the throne had a wife and two illegitimate sons. Not even illegitimate, they're not even his sons. And this other group really believes that the, this guy who's actually taking the throne is a bad guy. So, they, so it's a whole Game of Thrones and it's a giant like, it's such a beautiful, a rich way of just slowly creating this world and then tearing it apart in such a natural way that we really feel like it's so mind blowing that something this complex could have been written down. It's so done in the background and we don't really see it until it's there. And once we do see it, it's so beautiful. And then the same thing with the characters like Cersei and Jeffrey and like these people, I really, really can't stand. Right, and I can't, it, and I can't stand them because of like I can't get my finger on them. I can't figure out what what they're trying to do. Cersei's one thing, right? And I don't exactly know where she's going, but I can see that she's going in a direction that's going to be very interesting. But Joffrey, he's the kind of guy that I really feel like maybe could be bad writing, depending on how his character goes on. But so far, I have no idea. I have no. Idea. This guy's such an enigma that I really wish I could figure it out. But we just have to see it in the future novels because this could definitely be just the start of something great. I think my two favorite characters, other than Ned Stark, obviously, is going to be. Just the people in the north, Stannis and uh, the other guy, I forget, Renly, right? These two people, Robert's brothers, they blew my mind. Um, the fact that they were barely in the story at all, but despite that, so important to what's going on. And so just like such an iron fist in the in the workings of this novel. It just amazed me. Like I cannot wait to see these people. I'm just dying to see Stannis. He's gonna be such an amazingly fun character, I can already tell. Because he, he's not even present. He doesn't even know what's going on. And yet he's so powerful. And yet he's so already inside of the mix. Like people have been talking about him for ages. And Tyrion, I don't have much to say about him. Fantastic character. So interesting. So complex right away. And I can't wait to see where he goes. But the final character that I wanted to mention is Daenerys. Uh, Daenerys is very, very confusing. Because right from the start, we see this girl, right? And we see her and we see this very weak girl. And I didn't expect her to grow into such a beast so quickly. That was so unexpected that like right away at the end she started burning people alive and it blew my mind that this could happen. Admittedly, I did feel like it was a very weird slope upwards and uh, you know it was okay right from the start. It was a very slow creation. It didn't, it lacked the subtlety of the other characters and the world around it. A lot of it was unexpected and it really, although it wasn't foreshadowed, it didn't really feel like explosive like oh my god wow. It really felt more like the burning was crazy. That felt like really, what? what is she doing? The eggs and the dragons didn't feel that incredible to me. I know he was trying to make it like this big final scene, but to me, it didn't blow my mind. Um, it was kind of obvious that this was gonna happen, but the burning was just incredible. It was such an interesting uh, way of ending the story with such an interesting character arc for this girl. And it's Daenerys is one of my favorite characters now, obviously. She's great. She's a fascinating character with such a detailed uh, lore and a detailed goal and detailed character arc that I, I just cannot help but be very excited for what's in the future. So that's my general review overall for each of the characters and the plot overall. I think it's such a fascinating story with so many parts, so many moving parts and so many lovable parts that I, I'm very, very excited for the future stories. So if you want to join me on this journey to uh, see all the future books, I'm definitely going to be reading it very, very soon in the future. Uh, please go ahead and click that subscribe button or click that like button, comment down what you thought of my review. If you have any of the thoughts that I do or if you uh, disagree with any of my thoughts, I would very much love to talk about them with you in the comments down below. Anyway, thank you guys so much for bearing with me on this very, very long review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was worth your time. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.